Alrighty, morning everyone and welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on another beautiful day. In today's video, we are going to talk about street scrapping. How are you going to start with street scrapping? What kind of tools you need for street scrapping? The absolutely essential tools you need for street scrapping. Uh, what other kinds of stuff you need to think about when you want to do street scrapping? And also, what you may encounter and what you should be prepared for. So, yeah, we're going to do all of that today. And I think that's going to be pretty interesting. And we're pretty much just going to start with some essential stuff about street scrapping. So what is street scrapping? Street scrapping is pretty much you going out and scrapping on the streets. It's pretty self-explanatory. But um, the important part is that it's not always legal in every country around the world, um, especially where I am. It's not really legal to do that. You can't go out there and take other people's scrap because obviously these people want to keep their scrap. This is not something they throw away. They throw it on the streets because they want to keep it. And then the recycling thingy comes around and throws it all into a landfill and then they can't keep it anymore, but they wanted to keep it in the first place. So that's why you can't take it. Makes sense. But no, if you want to do street scrapping like that, you need to be prepared to encounter some weird laws that don't make any sense and that no one is going to enforce. So yes, it is Ill illegal in theory to take other people's scrap, but no one cares. No one's going to call the police because of that. Um, even though some stupid people might threaten you to do that, whatever, you know, people are generally not always nice, but um, essentially you're doing the planet a service, you're doing the people a service, and you're doing the city a service because they don't have to deal with this stuff. So you're pretty much doing everyone a service, and um, you're not really doing anything bad. So, you know, um, I wouldn't worry about that too much, even though, you know, you need to be a little bit careful sometimes, but um, essentially taking other people's trash out is not a bad thing. I think you pretty much figured that out by yourself. You should try to not go onto people's property, though, when you're street scrapping, because, well, we'll try to only break one law at a time here, okay? So don't really do that. That's not a good thing, because usually the stuff that's on people's property still is also kind of sketchy, because they might want to still keep it. It might be there for the trash uh, person to take it out, but, you know, it's not guaranteed. So I would only take the stuff that is really obviously on the curb or on the street and stuff like that, that is obviously trash. So I wouldn't take any risks there, just take the stuff that's obvious. Um, obviously, where street scrapping is not really a thing, where you can't really do that, um, there's also going to be way less scrap on the streets. What can you do about that? Not a whole lot, just t take a look around into your local dumpsters, maybe stuff like that, that would also be considered street scrapping, dumpster diving, whatever. Um, you can also do that, yeah, but then again, be a little bit careful, um, try not to do some trespassing stuff don't generally want to do that. Um, try to stay on public ground and stuff like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's still just trash that you're taking. It's it's not that big of a deal. Alrighty, with that out of the way, let's talk about the street scrapping itself. What do you need? Well, that kind of depends how you want to do it. If you want to do the very, very low-cost approach, you're probably not going to take a car because gas prices are through the blumming roof at the moment. So... The pretty much only alternative to that is either to have a bike with one of these big basket thingies in front that has like three wheels and stuff like that. I think you know what I mean. And um, I put a picture of it right there, what I mean. But um, that's not always the best decision because obviously bikes have a limit to the amount of stuff that you can put into it. And scrap tends to get a little bit heavy once you well, find a lot. And we don't really want that because you always obviously want to also take scrap steel. Prices of scrap steel are pretty decent at the moment. Um, not as good as they were a couple of weeks back, a month back. But, um, you know, you still don't want to really leave it there. So might not be the best option. It's way faster than the second option, which would just be you carrying uh, or pulling one of those little... Um, buggy thingies that you can put like a lot of weight into i've got one of them for like 600 kilos of weight which is quite a bit i think that's like 1300 pounds um definitely a lot like you can put a lot into that uh, which is a very good thing when you're doing scrapping because obviously you want to carry as much as possible um without quite carrying too much so really having something that is capable of carrying a lot of weight but that is still easily easy to pull and stuff like that really 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 good obviously when you take something like that you're going to be on foot so 
you got to make sure that all the stuff that you want to hit is kind of in close proximity to the area that you are in because you don't really want to walk like 20 kilometers a day or more, probably like 50, more like 20 is pretty normal, but 50 gets a bit annoying after some time, um, especially when you're carrying a lot of weight after some time. So got to make sure that you don't really overdo it in that way. Make sure that everything that you're doing is in close proximity to your area that you started in. So, um, yeah, that's also a very important thing. If you want to do it with a bike, that's not that important, but keep in mind you can't also, you can also not carry a lot of, uh, weight with you. Like, at least with most usual halfway decently priced, um, bikes with these big baskets in front of them for heavy loads. So, uh, yeah, but that's definitely a possibility that you can do. If you don't want to take a car, if you want to take a car, of course, go for something that has um, a decent amount of uh, loading capacity. Go for, like, a pickup truck or, like, a minivan, stuff like that, that you can just fit a lot of stuff into. You can also then um, take stuff like appliances and stuff like that, which you can't take otherwise. So that's also a very good thing because appliances obviously weigh a lot. So you can make some decent money there on scrap steel. But as I said, you got to keep in mind, gas is expensive nowadays. And, um, you know, it might not be the best use of uh, money to to buy a very big vehicle that then also uses a lot of um, gas. If you can also buy one that's a little bit smaller, but also uses a heck of a lot less of um, uh, gas. So, you know, you got to just kind of wiggle around that a bit, check the prices and stuff like that for what you want to do. Pretty easy thing. Once you've figured out whether you want to get a vehicle or whether you want to do it on foot, you got to figure out your tool situation. You don't really need a lot of tools for street scrapping. It's not heavy duty, um, really hard work scrapping that I usually do. It's more like lightweight stuff. It's usually just like clipping cords and carrying stuff rather than really like taking it apart and, and your tools really taking a beating. But I would still recommend you get high quality tools because that's just pretty much what I stand for. Um, if you don't get high quality tools, chances are that you're not going to do very well because if tools break, you're done, right? You can go home. So we don't want to do that. Uh, so what I would recommend everyone to have is a pair of good side cutters, something like this. It can be something bigger. If you if you uh, want to go with something bigger, you can obviously then use it for more heavier duty stuff. Uh, but something like this is usually enough uh, for the stuff that comes up with street scrapping, you know, clipping like the wires of a TV or whatever, a toaster and stuff like that. Um, just like generic stuff, this is definitely enough. Uh, there's no problem there whatsoever. So that's definitely something you can do. And as I said, I would go for something high quality. It doesn't have to be this exact brand. It doesn't really matter. That's the brand that I usually use, but um, you can also use some, there's some really good American made brands out there as well. I would not recommend you get anything made in China. Why? Well, pretty much the same reason as anything else. You don't want stuff to break and stuff from there usually doesn't last very long. So, um, also what you need is a good pair of these grippy thingies. I still don't really know how you call them, but I'm pretty sure everyone can tell what this is. And um, this is really important. Like for taking apart stuff, if you want to take apart stuff on the street, uh, you want this. Really, really important. Um, it doesn't have to be this exact one, as I said, but um, this is just very useful because it's got this little button here and you can really uh, adjust it very, very quickly and it grips on very, very well. So... Um, that's obviously something you should also have. What is also something you should have that can go along with this very well is a set of wrenches. Um, doesn't have to be a extremely high quality set of wrenches because wrenches just generally don't really break. It's a solid piece of steel. You can't really break that very easily. You can bend it, but you can't do that by hand. So, you know, just a good quality, um, decent quality set of wrenches is going to do. Um, you just need that if you want to take stuff apart on the spot. If you don't want to take stuff apart on the spot, um, you don't need it. But, you know, it's a good thing to have if you got maybe big stuff that you don't want to take and completely, or you can't take um, as it is, you got to take it apart because otherwise, well, you can't take it and you can't make any money off of it. So we don't want that. I would reckon get a good set of wrenches and um, also go get one of these to go together with it. Because sometimes, you know, you got to uh, wrench out a screw and it turns on the other side and you need this. So yeah, that's in generally in general the only stuff that you really necessarily need. You can get a wire cutter. Um, it's not necessary though for 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 street scrapping. Um, you don't have to. So the stuff that you're gonna encounter. That's why all this stuff is laying here. Um, is brass fittings of all kinds and sorts. Um, tabs made out of brass, stuff like that. Oh, bring a file. 
that's really important. Bring a file so you can check the stuff um, that you're that you you know that you encounter, um, whether or not it's brass or not. Some brass is plated and stuff like that. Uh, bring a file, really important. Uh, but besides that, you're gonna find some like transformers from lamps, which is stuff like this, um, wires that are just like like this, or these multi-core wires, extension cord wires, stuff like that. Um, that's why this thing is here, and stuff like that. You're gonna find a lot of that. What you obviously obviously also gonna find is a lot of appliances. Appliances sometimes have these inside, sometimes have motors inside. Sometimes you can just take them whole if you've got the capacity to do that. Um, Stuff like that, you know, can you make some good money off of those, actually, if you get them for free, and you obviously do if you're doing street scrapping. So, yeah, that's obviously a really, really cool thing that anyone can do. Nowadays, you can actually also make a good amount of money off of just the scrap steel of those appliances. Um, depends of if you want to do that. It's decently hard work. It's definitely not as hard as work as, as scrapping down um, electric motors and transformers. That's for sure. I tried both and I would really prefer to just collect appliances all day. Unfortunately, I can't. But... Um, yeah, what you're not going to find is stuff like this, um, massive copper contacts and stuff like that. That's just not the stuff that you're going to find when sweet scrapping. Just some people have weird expectations what you're going to find. Um, you got to take into consideration people have to throw this stuff away that you're going to find on the curb. It's not really usually the case that people just throw away plain copper. Even though you can find copper pipe and stuff like that that people just th throw away because they have absolutely no clue what they're doing. But... Um, you know, stuff like that. It's unlikely that you will find a lot of really high quality scrap like this. You're going to find a lot of medium to bad quality scrap that also adds up to a lot of money. That's pretty much the whole point of doing screech scrapping. A magnet is also something you can bring if you can't really tell whether or not something is steel or like tin plated brass or zinc or whatever or lead. Um, you can bring a magnet and you can figure that out pretty quickly. So if you want to do that, do that. That's definitely also a useful tool if you're just uh, starting and can't really distinguish the stuff from each other. I think that's a pretty useful thing um, to have. I also have one in most of my scrapping uh, containing thingies where I put all my tools and stuff like that uh, because it's useful just to have one around to check stuff whether when you're really not sure what it is um, can be quite useful. Alrighty so I guess that's pretty much all I have today for you just a little quick tutorial on how to do street scrapping because street scrapping is obviously a very very cool thing that most people can do and that is also very fun you can make some money you can have some fun and uh, stuff like that and I think it's just in overall a very cool thing. So um, yeah, let me know what you think. What is your opinion on, on screech scrapping in general? Is that fun for you or is it something you don't really like to do? Um, you can also like have anything that you might still want to know, write it in the comments. That would also be a really cool thing. I'm definitely going to answer that. And uh, also like rate the video with either like thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you might want to do. And also subscribe to the channel because we're almost at, well, not really, but we are moving in on a thousand subscribers. So that's a really cool thing. Thank you all very much for subscribing and, and supporting me uh, here along my little journey. And uh, so, yeah, thank you very, very much for watching and until next time.